I hope you see as well as I do that this actually was a pretty simple dietary intervention. Now keep in mind, the length of the, that intervention was 16 weeks. This was a randomized controlled trial at the exact same time. So we have three different dietary groups, but the outcome was just astounding. And the participants in this one particular study were serious, I mean serious headache sufferers. Now we're gonna go through the study lightly in the beginning and more into the diet details towards the end. But keep in mind, this was a 16 week dietary intervention. So don't expect the immediate results the first week. So with that in mind, let us proceed as follows. Consuming a diet with more fish fats, less vegetable oils can reduce migraine headaches, study finds. A diet higher in fatty fish help frequent migraine sufferers reduce their monthly number of headaches and intensity of pain compared to participants on a diet higher in vegetable-based fats and oils. Now, I want to go through an example of the group that was utilized for the particular study so you can develop some sort of context or at least relate to the individuals in the study itself to proceed. At study entry, participants averaged 16.3 headache days per month, 5.4 headache hours per day, despite reporting an average of 4.3 headache-related drugs per person. I'm going to reiterate that 4.3 headache related drugs per person, 122 participants, 67% had chronic migraine and 102, 56% met criteria for acute drug overuse. These are some pretty serious headache sufferers. So let's get into the study as follows in a 16 week, Dietary intervention, participants were randomly assigned to one of three healthy diet plans. Participants all received meal kits that included fish, vegetables, hummus, salads, and breakfast items. One group received meals that are high levels of fatty fish or oils from fatty fish and lower linolenic acid. A second group received meals that was high levels of fatty fish and higher linolenic acid. A third group received meals with high linolenic acid and lower levels of fatty fish to mimic the average U.S. dietary intake. All right, here's the results. The diet lower in vegetable oil. Now keep in mind, we're talking linolenic acid. Do not confuse with gamma linolenic acid. The body can produce GLA from linolenic acid, linolenic acid, but it requires a pretty arduous process. Also adequate levels of magnesium, zinc, and B6 to make sure that conversion takes place. And even then it's fairly slow. So please don't confuse the two between GLA and linolenic acid. The diet lower in vegetable oil and higher in fatty fish produce between 30% and 40% reduction in total headache hours per day. 16 weeks dietary intervention. 30 to 40% reduction in total headache hours per day, severe headache hours per day in overall headache days per month compared to the control group. Blood samples from this group of participants also had lower levels of pain related lipids. Now to get a little bit more into the detail of the diet itself, and this may help elucidate some of the questions that you may have. So the dietary information is as follows, three diets. There was the high in omega threes. There was a high in omega three, low in omega six. I have each one highlighted in different colors. The colors relate to each particular diet. Hopefully that makes it a little easier to extrapolate the information that you're looking for. And an average US omega three and omega six intake control diet. That's the one I read. The high omega three diet, H3 diet was designed to increase EPA and DHA to one and a half grams a day. That's the main context of the information you want to look for. One and a half grams a day while maintaining average US intakes of linolenic acid of 7.2% of the energy daily requirements or the energy intake. The H3 L6 high omega-3 low linolenic acid was designed to increase EPA and DHA again to one and a half grams a day 
and concurrently decrease the linoleic acid to equal or less than 1.8% of the energy intake per day. The control diet was basically a typical U.S. diet. The high-fat fish for the omega-3 and the omega-6 versus the low-fat or poultry for the control group. The omega-3, skip ahead a little bit, uh, low the acid group was given a blend of macadamia nut oil and extra virgin olive oil and regular butter as far as the other oils in the diet per se in conjunction with the high levels of fatty fish. So that gives you a good idea of the dietary intake. Now, the one thing that's amazing here, as far as comparison, let's say comparing to regular pharmacopoeia. Now check this out. This is how effective the diet was in comparison to other prophylactic medical prescription interventions per se. Not all prescription interventions, some are through injection. You'll see more in a second. Here we go. The mean reductions of 1.7 headache hours, I'm talking mean, so we're not talking the range of 30 to 40%, and four headache days per month in the high omega-3, low linoleic acid group, remember 1.8% of energy intake or equal to or less, versus the control group are comparable to those recently reported for the botulinum toxin injections, which is about 2.4 migraine days per month reduction. And monoclonal antibody targeting calcitonin gene related peptides, 1.8 to 2.1 day reduction per month with a composite headache endpoint. These findings suggest that the intervention might be an efficacious adjunct approach for managing headaches. Or if they're on the medications already, imagine in conjunction with this particular dietary intervention, well, without reiterating, for a 16 week period of time. Simple, beautiful, healthy, and immensely eloquent in its execution. So if an individual, if not yourself, are suffering from basically, like these individuals were, multitude of headache days per month and headache hours per day, this incredibly, incredibly simple intervention by increasing the omega-3s, and lowering the little of the gas levels down can yield you results, if not equivalent to a lot of the pharmaceutical interventions themselves and yield other health benefits, probably way even beyond that adjusted reduction of headache days. And this is only 16 weeks. Imagine if it was carried out, now not to have publisher bias, it was carried out for maybe six months or a year or became part of an average everyday dietary practice. Again, Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful results. Thank you for being published in the British Medical Journal. Great research. Gratitude to the researchers. And I always repeat, as always, I am humbled that you watch. I look forward to see you all once again next time. See you all next time. Bye. Oh, the links will be there too. So if you want to go to the full study as well, you know, the DOI is down in the comment section. Not the comment section, but you know, the description section of YouTube. So please feel free to go to it and look at it yourself just to confirm. And also, too, maybe you could see something I didn't see, uh, but and you'll do yourself greater benefit from the information from the full study itself. Also, to caveat it, not to confuse linoleic acid with gamma linoleic acid, all right? The body can manufacture GLA from linoleic acid, but it's an arduous process requiring magnesium, zinc, D6, and hopefully no other detriments outside either physical or dietary uh, impediments. Again, as always, thank you, gratitude, and see you all next time. Bye.